Okay, so I wrote this book about Zelensky just a few weeks ago, put it out. And since then, I've had people that would send me emails, send me uh, direct messages, whatever, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, whatever. They would send me things like, hey, don't you know that Zelensky is a Nazi? Or don't you know that he's a gay Satanist? I saw him dressing in drag. Okay, so I'm going to talk about at least the first one today, I'll address the other things. Is he a Soros plant or whatever else later on? But right now I want to talk about is Zelensky a Nazi or are the Ukrainians or the Ukrainian government, are they Nazi or what have you? Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about in this episode. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. You are listening to The Leader Smith, Darren Gertis. Okay, so we're going to start with is Zelensky a Nazi? Okay, the reason that people are asking that is because this is Putin's information. The, what Putin said on twenty on the twenty fourth of February when he invaded was, "We have to denazify Ukraine," and <laughs> denazify Ukraine is almost uh, uh, laughable when about the same percentage of far right wing like neo Nazi types exist in Russia as they do in the Ukraine. There's not a there's an, a negligible difference between the two. Okay, let's start with that. Let's also say, is Zelensky a Nazi? Well, Zelensky's Jewish. Uh, he's not a Nazi. His grandfather fought for the Soviets against the Nazis, um, and his grandfather was the only brother of four that actually survived the Nazis. His great-grandparents, his grandfather's mom and dad, were burned alive in a village burned down by the Nazis. Zelensky's not a Nazi. He has no Nazi sympathies or anything along those lines. Okay, how do I know? What are my sources? That's a good question. Before I answer those questions, how do you know if you're saying Zelensky's a Nazi? How do you know? Because you saw a meme on Facebook? Don't do that. Because some wackadoodle uh, who has some blog somewhere that has no real proof has saying, well, did you know about the gas chambers or the or the Naziness or the what? If you're get your information from legitimate sources, I'm a professor. This is what I do. I research. So my my book is heavily cited, uh, and I, I'm, I'm making sure that I'm dealing with legitimate sources. But I'm just going to go over the Nazi thing right now. When he was speaking to Congress, he's wearing this shirt, and people are like, oh, "See the Nazi symbol right there on his shirt." When he's speaking to Congress, it's the Iron Cross, and it's true. The Nazis did use an Iron Cross. But that is not the only people who use the Iron Cross. It predated the Nazis. The German government in World War I, when Nazis weren't even a thing yet, used the Iron Cross. More to the point, um, the British government uses the Iron Cross as their highest award. Their equivalent of the uh, Medal of Honor is uh, in the shape of the Iron Cross. It is called the Victoria Cross. We even use the Iron Cross in our distinguished sliding cross. The United States government uses that same cross with a propeller in it for the distinguished flying cross. Uh, again, they use an iron cross in the German Empire. You can find this information on Snopes. I'm not hiding it. Nobody's hiding it. But don't just don't believe what's out there about that. Uh, you know, uh, when you see a meme somewhere. Now, there's there's more to this. So the Iron Cross was was a thing on his shirt and people would see that's proof that he's a Nazi. It's not proof that he's a Nazi. OK, PolitiFact says the same thing. Even the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, which I'm a conservative, I'm not liberal, so I don't tend to like the ADL. But even they say the Iron Cross is a famous German military medal dating back to the 19th century. During the 1930s, the Nazi regime in Germany superimposed a swastika on the traditional medal, turning it into a Nazi symbol. In the United States, however, the Iron Cross also became one of several Nazi-era symbols adopted by outlaw bikers, more to signify rebellion or to shock than for any white supremacist ideology. By the early 2000s, this other use of the Iron Cross had spread from bikers to skateboarders to many extreme sports enthusiasts. Okay, so in and of itself, it is not a Nazi symbol. What it is, however, is the symbol of the Ukrainian military. So what you saw on Zelensky's chest during his speech to Congress was it would be like the president of the United States wearing a 
president, uh, a, a uniform presidential jacket or something that has his rank as commander in chief or something along those lines or, or the symbol of the United States military or that kind of thing. That's all that, that was. Okay, let's shift gears. Let's talk about are there, uh, are the government uh, members in Ukraine, are they Nazis? Okay, so there's a great um, article on factcheck.org, fa the facts on denazifying Ukraine. Um, Zelensky said, look, we're not going to sit down and negotiate at all if, if they're just going to keep talking about denazifying Ukraine. It's a pretext. That's all that that is. It's a pretext. Zelensky was democratically elected. He got 73% of the vote in a runoff election, 73% of the vote in 2019, and he's Jewish. This article, and by the way, I've linked all the articles, the Snopes, the Politic Fact, the Fact Check, and all the other things I'm talking about are linked below in the show notes. Uh, the article goes on to say that the influence of Ukraine's neo-Nazi faction is relatively small. Is there a far-right party? Yes, there is. And in the last election, or two elections ago, they got one member into parliament. And in the last election, they got zero members into parliament. So it's it's terribly small. Um, I'm going to quote, neo-Nazi, neo far-right, and xenophobic groups do exist in Ukraine, like pretty much any other country, including Russia. Now, again, I'm quoting, in the 30 years since Ukraine's declaration of independence, some guy whose name I can't pronounce, Mizira Jewuski Vonazak, wrote, its radical rights national electoral support only rarely exceeded 3% of the popular vote. That's how small it is. And remember, it's a parliamentary system. It's not like um, the United States, which is essentially Republican or Democrat. They can have all these fragmented little parties. And so they do. And they have, you know, somewhere between maybe 2 and 6% at any given time in their, uh, in their government. Uh, and it is 2% in uh, 2019. Okay, ultra-nationalist militias. We hear this about the, the Azov Battalion. Oh, the Azov Battalion, they're, they're these bad, you know, the, the military's full of them. No, hold on. The far right also gained some traction after popular uprising since 2013 and 2014, when Ukrainian's pro-Russian president, Viktor Yan Yanukovych, suspended an agreement passed by Ukraine's parliament to establish a closer economic tie to the European Union. And then he actually tried to make a deal with Putin. And that's what got him kind of chased out of the government. At the time, Putin then uses this as a pretext to come into Ukraine and protect Russians in Donbass and the Crimea, which they just annexed the Crimea. Okay, there was a group called the Azov Battalion, A-Z-O-F, like the Sea of Azov. OK, a group called the Azov Battalion, which was founded by two neo-Nazi groups. One of the group's organizers, Andrei Biletsky, is a white supremacist who, in 2014, wrote the historic mission of our nation in this crucial moment is to lead the white races of the world in a final crusade for their survival, a crusade against the Semite-led Unsherman mention. I, that's like a German term or something for under peoples or lower peoples or something along those lines. Okay, so he's a whack job. However, the battalion actually fought really well. And if you know anything about neo-Nazi types, they don't like communists. So they fought really hard against the communists that had come into the eastern region in the Donbass and in uh, the Crimea. Okay, and so they made a reputation for themselves because they were pretty good fighters, even if they were like this. Okay, so let's go on. The battalion's success in 2014 in helping to win back the city of Mariupol from separatists has made them heroes to many in Ukraine. Quote, this is um, somebody from the Wilson Center who's writing about this, who has a great deal of knowledge. Quote, if they, if they, the Ukrainian citizens, value them, it's not because of Nazi ideology, said this person whose name is difficult to pronounce, who manages the Wilson Center's Russia file and focus uh, Ukraine blogs. Quote, they value its patriotic stance. They value a group that fights an enemy that they that thinks their country has no right to exist. Remember, Russia thinks that Ukraine doesn't have a right to exist. They should be incorporated as part of Russia. They should not be their own independent country. And, and that presents a problem. OK, so the Azov Regiment was in fish, officially enrolled into the Ukrainian National Guard in late 2014. Why in 2014 first? Because Russia had invaded Ukraine's sovereign soil. 
Okay. And so they're fighting back and they're saying, Hey, you want to fight? <laughs> Go and fight. Um, now is the, as the Azov battalion large? No, it's, it's pretty small. Okay. We have to be honest. The article goes on and says they were just good fighters in 2014 and they seem to be good fighters now in Mariupol. And that's why they were taken on the books. Quote, the continued Russian aggression in the eastern Ukraine has presented them with an opportunity to characterize themselves as defenders of the homeland and thus expand their political authority beyond the lunatic fringe. But the Azov Battalion, this is, I'm still quoting, the Azov Battalion, which has about a thousand members. Okay, so we're talking about, they're Nazis, they're Nazis, when they have about a thousand members. The size of the Ukrainian military is about 200,000 and change. Right. And then if you add the National Guard, another 50,000 and then all able bodied men who can fight beyond that, which leads to some millions. OK, there are a thousand. It's tiny. This it's not like this. The place is just overrun with Nazis. So get your facts straight before you kind of spout this stuff. I'm going to continue to quote and quote. And while there are still some far right ties remaining in the unit, there have also been a flow of new recruits, mostly who are there not because or who are not there because of the regiment's ideology, but because of its reputation as a particularly tough fighting unit. OK, so that's who the Azov Battalion is. They're not it's not monolithic and everywhere. U.S. appropriations bills have specifically prohibited military aid from going to Azov. For example, on March 10th, the Senate finalized a spending bill that provides $13.6 billion in new aid for Ukraine, but specifically states none of the funds made available by this act may be used to provide arms training or other assistance to the Azov battalion. Okay, so we make the difference, and it's clear, but it's this tiny, tiny, tiny little fraction. OK, that being said, Russian propaganda is pretty strong. And you hear this parroted in America. And it, it's essentially Russian talking points. Now, I watch Russian TV. Look up RT.com backslash EN. I believe it's look at it's in the show notes. It's below. I have the link. I also will watch Ukrainian television in English. And you can see the difference for yourself if you watch it. Watch it. So the the, the um, Russian talking points are they're neo-Nazis. They're going in to cleanse Ukraine. Why Russia is you know, has the obligation to go cleanse Ukraine when they have as many neo-Nazis. By the way, we have neo-Nazis in the United States. They're a tiny fringe element as well. They're small, but they're, I mean, every major country, the U.S., most European countries have this small fringe element. So does Russia, but somehow Russia is going to cleanse them. Okay. The, uh, the, the article continues. There has been an intensive campaign of demonization, Tabarovsky, I think his name is, told us. And she said, re referencing Nazism has a certain resonance for Putin's core supporters in Russia. By the way, Putin has an 83% approval rating in Russia right now because of his special military operation. Because the people aren't being told what we're getting in Western media. Go and watch normal TV network news for the night and then go and watch RT and you'll think you, you've just like taken mushrooms or something. It's like a bizarro world. It's upside down. Okay. Um, there's a, I'm quoting again, there is a national historic memory formed around World War II and the victory over the Nazis. It's a strong part of the Russian national identity. Okay, I get that. There is a strong part in our identity as well. We're repulsed by Nazis in general as well. Umlan, an expert in Ukrainian nationalism, says this, quote, the primary reason that the Kremlin is doing this is because of the defeat of the Nazis was the high point of modern Russian history. And, quote, it's fairly obvious that a rather successful political psychological trick to justify the war among ordinary Russians. OK, so that's what it is. It's, it's a it's a political psychological trick. So the trick is, though, that it's all hands on deck. They need everybody that they can have to fight against the Soviets, or I'm sorry, the Soviets, the Russians who are acting like the Soviets used to act. <clears throat> so they need every, every all hands on deck. And so they're like, yeah, you want to kill Russians? Come on down. You are more than welcome to go kill as many Russians as you can. OK, quote, Ukraine has a far right, just like most countries of the world had, Umland told us, but their organization strength and electoral support are smaller than many in other European countries and in Russia. 
There's another professor who teaches uh, um, uh, Imperial Russia, Russia and the Soviet Union, Modern European Jewish History, History of Human Rights at the University of Pennsylvania. His name is Benjamin Nathans. He said, quote, Ukraine has a small right-wing nationalist contingent, just like many other countries, including France, Germany, the USA, and not least Russia. Neo-Nazi elements are not present in Zelensky's government, to the best of my knowledge. Okay, so that's kind of where we are with this. Okay, so that's part one of Is Zelensky a Nazi? I'll put out part two. I don't want to keep these too long. So if you like what you heard so far and you want more proof, I have more proof. So stick around for part two. See you later.